Welcome back to Ashley Life. In today's class, ooh, we're gonna get wedding ready. In this class specifically, we're gonna do makeup. In the next one, we're gonna do hair. But I first have to let you know that this was a bridal emergency. I had my best friend's cousin, Shelby. Hey girl, happy wedding. She had originally asked me if I could fly out and do her hair and makeup for a wedding, which I would have loved to do. However, I have another friend's wedding that exact same weekend, so it was just not gonna work out and I felt so bad. But then she contacted me and she had a hair trial and it went horribly. She sent me pictures. I will not show you, but it was bad and I felt so bad because because I am and do love the braid look. And that's what, exactly what she wanted. Then my Biffy, her cousin, texted me and said her makeup trial went bad as well. And I was like, are you kidding me? I feel awful that I cannot be there to like solve these problems. So the best that I can do is make a tutorial. And that is what I'm going to do. So we're going to do makeup and then we're going to do hair. And then the whole look comes together and you get married or someone gets married. Shelby's getting married for sure. Maybe you're getting married and you need this help too. And if you do, I'm so glad I could be here for you. A fun fact on my wedding, I did my hair and I did my makeup and I did most of my girls hair and makeup. It was a really fun day. People say I was crazy, but hey, everyone looked great. So let's get you hitched. The first thing I want you to do is get your hands on some Lumify drops. Now this little bottle is about $20 a bottle, but this little bottle is so worth it. It makes your eyes bright white. I highly recommend this for your rehearsal dinner and your wedding day. You won't regret it. Your eyes are bright white. First thing we're going to do is make our own foundation. I use two different shades of the e.l.f. foundation to create the perfect color. I add in Monistat, which I know sounds crazy, but it acts as a primer and has the same ingredients as Studio Fix, but is much more affordable. And then the next thing I mix into my own foundation is Cetaphil lotion. You can use whatever lotion you like. I just like that because it's unscented and it has a really good texture. I do have a class on how to make your own foundation, so if you want a more in-depth look at this, feel free to watch that. I'll put it in the links below. But for now, we're just gonna pump each color of foundation on the hand, add the Monistat, and add Cetaphil Cream, and mix till you get peaks. Then you are just going to apply it to your face. I like to use my fingers, but if you are doing this on somebody, you can use a sponge, you can use a brush, whatever floats your boat. Once that is mixed in, you're gonna take the lighter of two shades, place a dab on your hand, and then you're gonna go in for full coverage on places that need it, like under the eyes or any blemishes that you would like to cover. When I'm placing the foundation in the eyes, I am putting it in a triangle shape, working my way from the inner corner of the eye, down towards the cheekbone, and up towards the outer edge of the eye. This creates more open eye and looks better in photos. You can also place a little bit of foundation on your eyelid. This will act as a primer for your eyeshadow. Again, you are placing this foundation any places you need extra coverage. I love doing my foundation this way because it's a less cakey way to do foundation while still getting coverage and getting full coverage where you need it. It ends up looking less cakey at the end of the day, which is what you want on your wedding day. Then you're gonna wanna wash off your hands. Next, you want to set the foundation you just laid. I like to use NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder. Mine is in a light medium. Notice how I use a dabbing motion to apply the powder, and then I kind of blend it all in together at the end. Also, try not to breathe in too much. It gets a little dusty, and it can definitely make you sneeze. Now you have a perfect canvas to lay your makeup on. Next, you are going to want to contour, and I'm using a palette by e.l.f., but feel free to use whatever you have on hand. I do really love the e.l.f. St. Lucia color if you can find it. That's my favorite contour for brides, but really anything will do. No need to buy anything new if you have something that'll work, but I do like to use powders. The first place I contour is under my chin and behind my ears, and you're going to want to remember to do contour behind your ears, especially if you're doing an updo. And then you're gonna also wanna contour a little bit on the neck just to provide definition. Next place you're gonna contour is your cheekbones. And for this, I'm just using an angled brush and squeezing it. Notice how I dab, 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 and then blend out. Now, if this is starting to look like a little much, don't worry, we're gonna blend it all at the very end. You just have to trust the process. You want the contour to look a little crazy. Next place you're gonna contour is your forehead. Contouring your forehead is amazing because it ties all your makeup together, as well as if you have a little bit of a larger forehead, it will make it appear smaller. The next place we contour is our nose. I'm going to use that pinching technique again with the brush. The little place I contour is just below the lip and above the chin. And then the last little place I add contour is the brow bone area, again, just to blend everything together. 
and that's contour. Next up is eyeshadow. I use the Naked Heat palette by Urban Decay. It is my favorite. As you can tell, I have a lot of shadow that's missing. I need a new one here pretty soon, but I love these neutral colors. I love the warm tones in them. I love using the darker maroon color for the creases as opposed to using like a black. You want it a little bit softer for a really pretty smoky eye. And to do this eyeshadow, I use two different brushes. I'm going to first go in with a big fluffy brush. So depending on your eye shape and size will depend on what brushes you use, but I'm sure you've got something that will work. Again, I'm using a tapping motion to apply the shadow to the lid, and then I blend from there. The tapping motion really helps intensify the shadow where you're tapping. Now, of course, you can change these colors to whatever you want, but the technique will be the same, so just keep that in mind. Take that same color and work it under the eye. Do not afraid to be bold under the eye. This will really help the eyes pop. Now I'm gonna take a little bit more of a denser brush and go in with my darker maroon color using that tapping motion again, really packing it in. Take that color under the eye as well, keeping it more towards the outer corner of the eye. Then take that same color and use it as almost an eyeliner, connecting it to your crease, almost like forming a triangle, and just blend together. Now here's where you have to decide what you want to do next and what kind of look you're going for. If you're going for a just easy breezy subtle beauty look, you will add some eyeshadow to the inner part of the eye like a light cream color. If you want a little bit of glitter, we're going to translucent powder the face first and then add some glitter. I have a lot of glitter classes. We're not going to do glitter today, but if you were interested in that, I'll have it linked below so you could check out how to glitter up your look. Just adding just a little bit of glitter in the corner of the eyes would be so pretty, but we're just going to keep it basic today and we're going to take another brush and add a lighter, more creamy color to the inside of the eyes and just kind of blend up into the crease. Now we're going to blend all these dark, crazy colors together using translucent powder. I love the one by Physicians Formula in translucent. And you're just going to take a big brush and dust this all over the face, which will blend all the dark colors into a more natural tone. That's right, you're going to even take it over the contour. That's what's going to tone it down. Now you can see that toned down the eyeshadow as well, so we want to go back in and brighten it up just a little bit. Take the two eyeshadow brushes that you were using for the darker colors, and they still have residual eyeshadow on them, so you're just gonna use those to go in and brighten it back up a bit. And if you've brightened the eyes up too much, you can always add a little bit more translucent powder, just like we did before. You just have to find what works for you. So if you were doing glitter, this is where you would do glitter after you put on the translucent powder because any glitter that falls you can then dust away with a brush and now we need to bring the face back to life and we are going to do that by adding blush I'm just using a palette by elf and if you haven't noticed already I like to use things that are affordable but work now another space I like to add a little bit of blush just by dabbing it on is on my brow bone I feel like it really pulls the whole look together and if you ever feel like you went a little too crazy on the blush, take that translucent powder brush and just go over the area. Now I have this highlighting pencil that I am almost out of. It is a dupe for the Benefit one. It's a Wet n Wild brand and you can get it at Target. So this I'm just gonna highlight the brow bone. If you don't have a pencil, you can definitely use a lighter eyeshadow to do this as well. So I just kind of apply it and blend it out with my fingers. Now if you wanna add a highlight, now is the time. I am using Moonchild Glow Kit by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It has a few different colors. You can see that my favorite is almost out. Now when you highlight, you just wanna do a little bit on the tip of your nose, on your high cheekbones, maybe a little bit above the brow bone, and a little bit on the cupid's bow. If your skin is mature, you may want to skip the highlighting process altogether. Any deep lines you have, this will bring out. Okay, now one thing you can't forget is to do your eyebrows. Your eyebrows are like the window to your eyes. 
and the eyes are the window to your soul. So if you don't do your eyebrows, we're not gonna be able to see your soul in your wedding pictures. So do not forget to do your brows. If you have a full face of makeup on and forget to do your brows, it's just gonna look like a little something's missing. So even if you think you have the most amazing brows in the whole world, or if you're not used to doing your brows, you still need to do your brows. I have lots of classes on them, you can check them out. And I also recently found a new way to do my brows, which I'm enjoying so much, but we're just gonna keep it basic today. And we're going to use today my favorite eyebrow pencil by NYX. It's the Micro Brow Pencil. It's so much fun, it has a little spoolie, it twists up, it always stays sharp, and it comes in lots of different colors to match your brow. Now one thing I've been doing lately before I do my brows is making sure my brows are clear of any excess makeup. I just take a Q-tip, get it a little damp, and work it over my brows, picking up any extra makeup. Just a little hack I've been doing lately. Give it a try. Now take your spoolie and comb through the brows, pushing them upwards, and just fill the brows in. Now once you've filled them in, go in with the spoolie and blend them. If you were going to do a winged black liner, which would look super pretty, this would be the time to do it. I am not, however. I usually don't. I like a little bit of a softer look, but hey, I support a winged liner for sure. Right now we're going to get into lashes. I love the number 102 Glamours in Black by Ardell. Those are my favorite bridal lashes ever. You can use other things, but these are my favorite. Something you need to remember about lashes is that you need to trim them. Everyone needs to trim their lashes. There's hardly a person out there that the lashes are just gonna fit perfectly automatically. If you've had trouble with lashes in the past, it may be because you never trimmed them. If you don't trim them, they come up at the ends and that's when they start to bug. So we're gonna trim these lashes from the outside in. I love the Ardell Clear Adhesive, but use what you like. If you don't know how to put on lashes, I have plenty of classes that you can check out on how to do it. And also how to's on which lashes to buy. The trick to lashes is waiting for the glue to get tacky, but not dry. to the other eye. Now it's time for mascara. I prefer the Voluminous by L'Oreal. Again, super affordable. They make a waterproof one that is amazing. I like the color Carbon Black. If you notice my technique, I like to put the spoolie very close to the bottom of the lashes shimmy a little bit and then work my way up. I love to put my lashes on before my mascara because I really feel like it helps blend the lashes together when you add the mascara. Some people like to do it the other way, but not me. And one thing you'll want to remember is after your mascara dries, do a second coat. Oops, we almost forgot to set our makeup. I use e.l.f.'s Makeup Mist and Set. I usually do this before mascara, but it's no biggie. It's very refreshing. Now the last thing we have to do are lips. That will really pull everything together. And lips are honestly your choice. What do you feel comfortable wearing? Do you want something a little bold? Do you want something a little dark? Do you want something natural? This is all up to you, so you're gonna have to figure that for yourself. I'm just gonna kinda use a neutral lip for today. This is by Bite Beauty. It's a matte cream lip crayon in Glace. If you wanna do a liner before you do a lipstick, go ahead. I just haven't been doing that lately. Again, the lip color is kind of up to you. This is the time to go in and check out everything. If you have any mascara that bled or you need to go in and touch in some eyeshadow or add a little more brush, this is the time to do it. And there we have it, wedding makeup. If you want to change the colors up, do so. If you use lighter colors, it will lighten the look and brighten the look. If you use darker colors, it will darken the look. But the same technique is applied and will work the same. Just change the colors if that's what you'd like to do. But a couple of tips for this makeup. Keep a fluffy brush and the translucent powder handy and use that to touch up through the night if you get a little shiny. Also keep your lipstick nearby so you can touch up. If you use a stain, which this is part stain, that's the best thing you can do for a wedding. And also, if you are sweating off your butt on the dance floor like you should be, don't worry about it. You can sweat through this makeup. The sweat will literally come through this makeup. All you have to do is take some kind of paper towel or napkin and damp and blot it and it will stay perfectly. And this is perfect too if you have, say, a really hot wedding in the summer and you're starting to sweat. Just keep some kind of cloth with you or a towel with you to just blot and the sweat will go away. Don't wipe, blot. 
And that's it. That's my go-to wedding makeup. I hope this has helped. Stay tuned. We're about to do hair. So in the next class, we're going to jump into a really cool bridal braid hairdo. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Otherwise, make sure to like and share so other people can like and share. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next class.